Let's just start with a prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, take my words and use them to speak to us of the living word who was in the beginning. Amen. Well, we're still in the season of Advent, with just under a week to go till Christmas. But you can feel some excitement rising. It was hard to get excited about Christmas last year, to be honest. There were no Christmas parties. No. There were no Christmas parties. Or at least, not for the likes of us. There were, there were no family visits, sadly. There was not much seasonal good cheer. And we hope for better this year, but the signs aren't looking too good at the moment. So I want to take you back a few years, before COVID and all its associated horrors, back to a simpler time of freedom and fun. And one of the features of the Christmas season was always the Christmas party, which was great for party lovers. Did I tell you my middle name was Scrooge? And if you were really lucky, you might get invited to a fancy dress party or even host one yourself. Now, there is just one question around fancy dress parties. Who shall I go as? And unless you're the rector and have access to a full-on cow costume, <laughs> as some of us saw this morning, there are really only two possible answers to that question. One... What can I find in a charity shop and supplement with bits and pieces from home? Or, if expense and effort are no object, what do I really want to go as? How do I see myself? I once found a long wig and a pair of little round glasses and a cheesecloth shirt, and I went to a party as John Lennon. I still couldn't sing or play a note, but I imagined that just for a while, a little bit of beetle cool rubbed off on me. And if you read the society magazines, it's fascinating to see how the rich and powerful like to go to parties dressed as someone even more rich and powerful than themselves, which explains the over-representation of Julius Caesar, Napoleon, or Attila the Hun. Now, why am I talking about fancy dress parties? Well, if I can do so reverently, I like to imagine a conversation in heaven before the very first Christmas. Jesus is there, of course, because John has told us in the reading we've just heard, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And Jesus and his Father have been planning this for a long time, that he would come to the earth for us men and for our salvation, as we say in the creed. But who would he come as? Because we're not talking here about fancy dress, put on for one night and then discarded, but about a form and an identity that he would wear for 33 years. It had to be something Jewish for a start, for God had long ago marked out the Jews as his chosen people, and salvation would come through them. So perhaps he could come as Abraham, the patriarch, the father of his people, to whom that original promise was given, as we heard in the second reading. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed. And then perhaps we would see the fulfillment of the promise and the blessing of all the nations. Well, we did see that, but no, Jesus did not come as Abraham. So who perhaps he might come as David, as the angels sang to the shepherds, to you in David's town this day is born of David's line a saviour. So why not come as David? David, the great king, who even as a teenager defeated the giant warrior Goliath and freed his people from the Philistines. Wouldn't it be neat if the new David freed his people from the Romans? Well, yes, it would be neat, but no, Jesus did not come as David. 
So how about the prophet Isaiah, who contributed more than anyone else to this evening's readings, the one who foretold Christ's birth and kingdom? Prophets were those inspired people whose task it was to call the nation of Israel back to God when they wandered away from him. So that would be perfect, wouldn't it? The thing is, though, that John in his reading tells us there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. So Jesus already has a herald in the person of John the Baptist who himself quoted the words of Isaiah. Jesus couldn't be his own herald. So no, he didn't come as Isaiah. And we all know, of course, the astonishing choice that he did make. Neither patriarch, nor king, nor prophet, Jesus came as a helpless baby, born to an unmarried mother, away from home, and in circumstances of the most wretched poverty and risk. Though he was the ruler of heaven, he headed unerringly for the bottom of the heap. And why would he do that? Well, partly, I suppose, solidarity with the human condition. He was little, weak and helpless. Haven't we all been there? With the poor and mean and lowly lived on earth, our Saviour holy. In a world where gods were so often co-opted in the service of government, of the powerful. This God was definitely one for the ordinary people. And also, it's instructive to look at the reactions that he provoked in those around him. In his mother Mary, he inspired a profound and unquenchable love, which sustained her, and I suspect him, through all the years ahead. And in the shepherds, those simple, rough, uneducated men who lived rather on the margins of society, well, I think he inspired in them a gentleness, a tenderness, a desire to protect, to welcome him as they sensed that he welcomed them. And as for the three kings, well, he brought out of them an overflowing and outrageous generosity, giving to this peasant baby the most precious commodities in the world. He neither demanded nor commanded, as a patriarch, a king, or a prophet might have done. But simply by his very being, he inspired love, gentleness, welcome, and generosity. And he still does. As this year draws to a close, there are, heaven knows, enough people in our homes, in this parish, in our country, and around the world who need to be treated with love, gentleness, and generosity, who need to be made welcome. That Christ is no longer a child, but is risen and present with us. But as we encounter him once again in our imagination as a helpless child, will we allow him to inspire in us those same qualities so that we may take to, tho to those around us his love, gentleness and generosity? That would make for a really happy Christmas. Amen. Amen.